part two in a five-part series, The History of Us, to give you guys some context of where we're coming from and how we ended up YouTubing. So last video, we talked about what we were like growing up. Floridian country boy, but also very involved in the, in the city. Born from California. Today, we're gonna <laughs> talk about how we met and how we began dating. So first, what brought you to North Carolina, so being my, from Florida? My dad um, was offered a job here building a Holiday Inn, and so they came up here. They always wanted to live here. It was kind of like mm. one of the things that they had always wanted to do. So the opportunity came, and so they said, let's move. And I was, I just turned 16. So what did they get you? You came to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. That's a different culture. What did you get involved in? The primary thing, because we came at the end of my 10th grade year, so school was already out when we mm. moved to here. So it wasn't like I could like go to school to make friends. So um, we just got involved in church at the local Baptist church here mm. in town. One summer, when I was a teenager, I was 16, I guess, or 17. You were 16. Uh, mowing grass, having my own business. Uh, in summertime, I'm the kind of guy that I always liked to have one close friend, but my close friend ended up going in the summers to visit his mom in like Washington State. Mm -hmm. And I can remember mowing grass one day, just being particularly lonely. And I just thought, all right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I was on my way home and I just prayed and I said, God, give me somebody tomorrow. Remember I'm 16, 17 years old. I know God's not a genie in the bottle. But this was the 16, 17 year old. I even cried, I was so lonely. Bless you. <laughs> uh, I think that was coming from, cause I had tried to visit with a friend mm. and uh, I was coming, I wasn't coming home from mowing. I was coming home from uh, visiting a friend and a they started doing some things I was not com uncomfortable with, you know, smoking some stuff and whatever, drinking. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't into that. And I went home thinking, well, this can't be my friend and this is no fun. And I cried and asked for somebody tomorrow. Well, tomorrow came, I mowed grass, and I thought, you know, it's the end of the day. I'm thinking, well, God, I'm not gonna, g I guess you're not gonna give me anybody. But I thought, I'm looking back now, like, what, really? Some some girl's gonna come. Come out of the house and be mowing. like, who are you? Let's be friends. <laughs> give me some iced tea, sweet tea. I don't know what fantasy I was thinking. You should have been mowing my yard. Yeah. Because I probably would have come out and talked to you. Having grown up in church, I got mm -hmm. involved in the youth group. So I was, I would go to the youth group that Wednesday night. Yeah. And I went down and sat on a curb, and uh, I was there early, and before it started, this beautiful, Moni Maroney, <laughs> <laughs> really young thin. lady, blonde, came walking around the corner. Yep. And it was me. And then what happened? And I came right up to you, and I said, hey, what's your name? Because <laughs> I was there did to you? make friends, you What know? did I say? I guess Justin. I have no idea. Yeah. I'm glad you came and talked to me because I'm scared to death of girls. Yeah, you wouldn't be yeah. able to talk to them. You wouldn't yeah, have so talked you came to me. Talk so to I me. just was like, well, so in my, like, because I, here I am, the new person in town. I don't really know people. This was like, a, this was the second or third week that I had been to Wednesday night church. Um, and so, again, remember, I moved around a lot as a child. And so... One, church was always a stable thing for me. And two, then school were always places that I could make friends. But school was out, so church was the only part. So, you know, I was 16, but I had made friends at, at, at many other churches before. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. You so know, you were we, good at this. I yeah. Was so I had had some experience with with making new friends and you know like first day of school you got to make some friends like in the first couple of hours yeah, like hey when you. do you eat lunch and like can i sit with you and you have to put yourself out there it's 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 really hard so, um to do but you get used to it and and you know how to do it so yeah. um i came up to him and just started talking to him what was our, we, we were friends, we yeah. dated, we thought we were dating, or I thought we were dating, but <laughs> we don't have to get into that. Uh, what was like our first like date date or when I asked you out? Do you want to tell that so or do you want me to tell we that? Went, when I like asked you out and you knew what I was saying. Yes. So we, it was um, January 23rd of 1996. We went on a ski trip with the church. It was, what is that? Um, 
in well, some holiday in January okay. that we didn't have school. Okay. And so the youth group had went um, skiing, snowboarding up at Sugar Mountain. And so we went up there and we had, we had actually, there wasn't enough room in the vans. They didn't have enough drivers. So um, we ended up riding with another couple who had just become a couple. Mm -hmm. And so they said to us, oh, you guys should date. And we were like, ah, oh, we're best friends. Like, we don't really want to ruin our relationship by dating because we really enjoy one another's company. And they were like, Psh, you should still date. That sounds um, like you talking. No, I think we both were saying that. Okay. All right. Anyways. Um, so then later on that day, he asked me on the ski lift if we would want to be boyfriend and girlfriend. Is that what I said? No, I think you said go out, but I think we... Okay. So we started dating on the Snowboard Mountain, and every once in a while we remember our dating anniversary, <laughs> January 23rd, yep. 1996. Yep. So we've been together 23 years, which brings up Rachel Riss's question. What do we fight about? <laughs> <laughs> we fight. We... We, she likes I, I don't like to use the word fight because I feel like, like that, that sounds else. really like dramatic. We just have disagreements so, where we have to work it out and and do our, and you know figure out how to proceed in agreement with one another. So to answer this safely without getting each other in each any more trouble, <laughs> I'm going to say something that causes trouble, and she might say something if you want. You can say something I'm that causes guess. trouble. If I that don't, I do. I, I do cause do. trouble. When I don't listen, you know, and, and I'm too quick to come up with a solution too. And sometimes she just wants to talk and I just need to hear it out. Mm. And sometimes I don't hear it out one and then two, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a solution. And that could be very frustrating. And that's something I'm personally working on because that's disrespectful not to listen. Yeah. So I'm sorry about that. And I'm working on that. And, um, uh, that's probably a lot of guys' problem. I think we all struggle with listening. Yeah. Not me. Okay. Not <laughs> just kidding. I mean, yeah, communication. Communication is probably the biggest, um, like, communicating what you're really trying to say. Um, and, listen, and the other person listening, like, I am not great at, um, I guess, maybe speaking. I don't know how to say this. Do I? Am I not good at speaking my needs, or mm. um, that might get us in some trouble sometimes? Like I'm not good at like saying what directly. I really. Yeah, I'm not communicating directly enough. Um, that probably is a big thing. I don't think we, we don't really fight about money, do we? I don't think we've ever not really, really fought about money. We've no. never. We're really on the same page about a lot of things, which is really helpful. Um. Yeah, how did it turn out? Because we got married and we were not into like healthy eating. I was a professional mountain boarder. Well, we started dating when uh, we were 16, which is, and then that doesn't usually last. <laughs> like, it's like what? It's, isn't it how like two out of 100 it? people who are high school sweethearts get married and then one out of two of those couples gets divorced? Yeah. So it's so, like, how did we... And that other couple that was with us on the trip is divorced. Yeah. So I think that, I don't know if I have it in here or not, but I think then the, but we've changed so much. Well, I think it's we, not like we could have sat down and said, I want four kids. I want a farm when I grow up. Mm -hmm. I want to eat organic. Well, we did I want say to, we wanted four kids. That well, I want was something homeschool. we agreed on. Homeschooling, we didn't talk about. We had a fight. We had a fight. Before we had kids. Before we were married. I wanted to do like my dad used to do and just put our our uh, lunch in a, re, a, a grocery a bag. Grocery a grocery bag. Plastic grocery bag. Like, we're not <laughs> she, doing that. What do you want? That. Paper bags? I wanted or, to do or, the little brown paper bag. And or I think get now, a reusable I, I think lunch now bag. we would both agree on reusable. <laughs> 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 but we had a big old fight about that. We fought about if cars. And trucks are boys were females or males. Yeah. Apparently, they're all females. Yes. So I don't all know how they're reproducing this thing. <laughs> but anyway, we won't fight about yeah, that. Yeah, so I think that honestly, I wonder if a lot of it is that we grew up together. That has to be because, it. Because, like, we started January, we were 16. We also did fight quite a bit about stupid stuff. 
you know. Oh yeah, like those two things. We I dated just mentioned. for five and a half. So we were together for five and a half years before we actually got married. So there was a lot of time in there to like get out these um, issues. So I remember, so our first year of marriage, we really didn't fight as much as like our other newlywed friends. And I remember thinking, why don't we fight as much we as everybody out. else? Like what is wrong with us? But then I think those other people didn't date for five and a half years before they got married. Yeah. And so they didn't have all those like, I think a yeah. lot of the issues that we would have had if we would have gotten married within a year of yeah. meeting each other, we wouldn't. And I've it was, had such a pleasant We spent year. so much time together, like we did. college. Yeah. So we were college. not married yet, but we went to every single class together. We, we carpooled. We did not classes. have like the college, typical the, college experience. No. We don't have any friends from college. We just, we were our, each other's friends and we just went to college, came back, did mm -hmm. our work. Yeah. Um, we commuted to college. So I think so we that, didn't. that if there's a secret to that success is what you said, we grew up together. But I think no matter when you get married, we're all still mm -hmm. growing. We're yeah. still growing. We'll yeah. look back on our 40 year old uh, at this video when we're 60 and think, oh, how <laughs> cute. Uh, how do we make it? <laughs> how yeah. do we do it? Yeah. Uh, I think it was, it's two major things and it's that we fight. So. Well, we talk, we're we very have, so transparent. We we when open, one hurts open. the other, they're sure to tell them. In yeah. different kinds of ways. Yeah, I think, and, and, and in trying to be mature about it and not like, like not isolate or not yeah. try to hurt the other person in some way emotionally, but just like being like, using a lot of I statements, I feel like I'm not being heard or I feel like whatever yeah. it is that happened. And so then, then the other person doesn't feel attacked and then they can process it kind of in how like well, what what was my role in this because you know there's two roles in every marriage so yeah there's always two sides to the story so you know just kind of like stepping back and knowing that and then just having um compassion and kindness i think another key is what a mentor said at his wife's funeral hmm. when, it, when he became a widower is we have to live in each other, walk in each other's forgiveness. Mm. And so I'm always quick to say I'm sorry, maybe too quick, and maybe it's shallow at that point. But I'm always quick to then try to make deposits to try to show that I'm sorry. And that has helped. And you have not always said you're sorry. No. <laughs> but I've asked you, I'll, He's I'll have you me under to the say, bus. <laughs> I'm sorry. And But then you'll say it, and I very much appreciate yeah. that. Because you could not. There are people that don't. Yeah, no. Even if they're pressed I to always, say, you know. I try to apologize. You, there has to be some fault from both parties. Yeah. And I'm hurt. And you're not saying I'm sorry, and then they won't. That's yeah. very difficult. Yeah, no. I, I can't imagine that working out. Because I would want, I, I think it's too, like, that whole, like, treat others how you want to be treated. Yeah. So, if. I would want someone to apologize to me, then I need yeah. to apologize to them if I've done something to hurt them. So I think it's a lot of talking, like mm -hmm. a lot of talking about everything, not just like the hurt everything. feelings. Everything. Like um, ideas and, and I don't know, just uh, we talk about everything. Yeah. Um, what was our health like meeting and dating? That's the same as growing up. Well, it I, probably got worse because our was, parents weren't having a control over us. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty sickly, actually. I remember always having some sort of cold or I was on a lot of antibiotics at that time. You know, like I was in college and so we were um, going, you know, well, actually right, right before I started college, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism. So I... I guess I would like to try to find, I would love to try to find those medical records to see if they actually tested my antibodies. Um, because later in college, I went to the college, like when we were at UNCA, I went to the clinic and um, I had had some weird symptoms that I thought were related to my thyroid, but I wanted to get checked with, um, with somebody. And so they sent me to an endocrinologist to make sure that everything was okay. And that was the first time I was told that Hashimoto's could mm. be at play here, but nobody ever did any blood work or said anything about like what I should do. They just said, keep taking your medicine. And so I said, okay. And we didn't have the internet. This was, you know, I was diagnosed in 1997. This was like 2000, 2001. The internet just wasn't as big as it is today. Like, um, I mean, I guess I could have gone to the library and gotten mm. a book, but 
No. I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have known what to do. And no. had those people even written the books, you know, so at that point. So we weren't point. on our merry our health journey yet. No, I mean we ate fast food, we drank soda, sad, we ate candy. The, the sad diet. Sad yeah, American diet. The standard Junk American food, diet. Not clean meat. Yeah, I mean not just a lot of eat whatever we could. Yeah, we didn't we didn't care about what we were putting in our bodies. So <sighs> I was really sick a lot. I remember I was at the doctors, I took a lot of antibiotics. Um, not, not good, I would say. So you talk about that struggle with your health and it brings mm -hmm. me back to maybe what we should have talked about in the previous video, mm -hmm. but what's kind of like our biggest struggle growing up? I mean, you're starting to get into your struggle of health, which certainly mm -hmm. what, would that have been your biggest struggle growing up? Or My biggest struggle one? was probably making friends. Okay. Like that was really, it's hard. It's, it, um, it's hard to like find people that I mean cuz like when you're put in a school like you're districted into a school I went to public school um I I went to private school in my elementary years but as I got older we went I went to private or public school so like you go to a school of just the people who live around you you know like it's a district and then you go there and so then you have to find people that are like like you or you know like there's that whole peer pressure thing and you know i was always like pretty goody two shoes like i didn't get in any troubles and you know i i was um you know i came home on curfew and i wasn't hanging out with questionable people or anything like that i mean you know i would spend the night with my girlfriends and we would you know go swimming at midnight like woo in the pool you know like roll real bad um nothing like too intense you know we like weren't going to parties we were mm -hmm. we i had a um a pretty good group of friends you know growing up like um i had one constant uh, best friend that i'm still friends with um and we're gonna see her on vacation her and her family and we're really good friends with them and then um yeah i mean i had i had a good set of friends but at the same time like it's just hard to find people that you can be vulnerable with, I guess, is the word for it. Now, I didn't know that was the word. We're gonna wrap up this video really soon. Struggle? We got two more questions. I'll, I'm gonna talk about struggle, okay. and then we're gonna talk about extended family. Are they like mm. us now? And then how how I got into professional mountain boarding. So we're gonna talk about our income at this point. So a lot of people in our member are wanting to know more about my professional mountain boarding days. We we <laughs> we put out questions uh, for these videos. And a lot of people are interested in that. And it was an interesting time in our life. But for me, my biggest struggle was my parents' divorce, hands down, mm -hmm. when I was 14 years old. And there were three, three other siblings at the time, well, two younger and one older. Uh, everybody's two years apart. That was hard. And it was the most peaceable divorce you could ever imagine. Uh, the, we, we got split between them half and half. Uh, so it's got to see our mom and dad both half the time. And uh, they didn't talk about. They about each never other. talked. My mom has never talked poorly about my dad, and my dad has never talked poorly about my mom. And I know they don't get along. So, cheers, cheers to them, in that respect. Mm -hmm. But it's still, it's still very hard. Yeah. And um, that probably shaped us, me, for the better, mm -hmm. and who I am, and how I'm trying so hard to bring the family close and do everything together because I don't remember doing anything together mm. but going to church. And uh, I remember my dad would take us to the movies. Uh, my dad would take us on trips. Mom wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Mom would take us on a vacation. Dad wasn't there. And I don't know what that was about. Nobody talked bad about anybody. And um, now maybe that's why I wanted to keep everybody so close. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Because I can't really say that because my siblings aren't necessarily that way. have everybody, all yeah. three meals a day. So maybe it's just who I am. Maybe that's part of what brought me here. I don't know. Our extended family, are they like this? <laughs> and when I say like this, do they grow their own food, homeschool, eat organic, Homestead. travel America in a, in a converted school bus, <laughs> all 50 states? No, we're pretty much the weirdos. I think they wrote us off as crazy a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, we've so. never, we've never, <laughs> ever swum with the fish. Like, we've always <laughs> gone against the current. We've always been counterculture. And a lot of our 
and a lot of things that we've done in our lives, like we've we've always been different. So yeah. I mean, like uh, Justin, like we you, all through college, you had a business that you ran. I think when I quit and, like, Walmart we, to start my own business, now looking back on that was pretty that telling. Was, yeah, and like we got married, and then like he worked from home after we were married, and I didn't work. Yeah. Um, outside I drove of home. a FedEx route once. <laughs> to see if I wanted to buy it. But even then, like, you buy FedEx routes. Yeah, and then you hire like, you're people. You're the owner. And people run it for you. So even then, yeah, I was going to have a bunch of routes. But then I was like, I'm not very directional. I'm not going to get very started <laughs> on this. So that was before GPS and stuff. Yeah, he was like, so, I'll never find my way home. <laughs> uh, okay, we're so, getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah, we got to jump. Okay, okay, so let's so, go to the mountain boarding, unless you're done talking about this. Yeah, I mean, I think that with our extended family, we've just always been a little bit different. And yeah, they... Pretty much accept us for who we are. Yes. They, they, um, bless them. Yes. Bless them. Well, we should say this real quick because when I started wanting to know I was going to marry you, mm -hmm. I wanted to propose to you where I wanted to live with you. Mm -hmm. And that was right there. I wanted a fire. What was it, May? It was May You probably 8th. thought I was crazy it for was trying May to get 8th, a fire started. And he started. was like, I want to put a fire in the fireplace because we didn't because have the wood stove then. This barn was there built, was no but it was stove. not finished. It was just. Yeah. It was just. There was no kid. Oh no, no, no! When you proposed to me, it was it was finished. Was it? Yeah, it had. But it wasn't it, rented out yet. It of was course. not rented My out. My dad yeah. had finished this, and he was going to rent it out, but it hadn't happened yet. Yes, it and was. It was going to happen really soon. I rented a horse and took you on a horse he ride. He found a horse, and we. And went you on didn't a horse. pick up on this. I didn't. I was wanting I to build totally a fire didn't. and everything. I proposed to you right there. We in front made of that it. Fireplace. We made a meal in the kitchen. The kitchen was there. Yeah. And we made a meal in it, and. Um, we I had got, to eat with our hands because I forgot to, <laughs> I forgot forks. I got down on my knees yep. and I said, "Will you marry me?" What'd you say? Yes, <laughs> of course. And there you would have married me four was, years earlier, wouldn't you? I would have. Well, I guess I we wanted, were engaged for six years. No, we were engaged ridiculous. for two years. Oh, okay. So but we, you would have married me at eight. We 18. got engaged. So we started dating in 1996. We got engaged in '99 and we got married in '01. If we had to do that again, we would have gotten married in '97. I think we would have got married at 18. Yeah, we would not have waited. All the parents always. are freaking out now, letting their kids watch the show. <laughs> I, I don't blame you, because can so you imagine? We yeah, Faith, she's she's eighteen. My niece is about to turn eighteen, her? and I can't imagine. <laughs> if... Her boyfriend, that's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I it, it's 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 hard because at one hand, like you and I knew we were gonna get married. Yeah, like we knew it for a really long time, and like the I think. Our parents all wanted us to not get married right away because they thought that we wouldn't finish college. Yeah. And that would have maybe happened. Um, but who cares? Should we say what we even did in college? I didn't use college? anything from college. So Go we ahead. both got business de business management degrees from UNCA. The thing is this. No, 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 no. Okay, so in 01, the internet, again, was a very small thing. But it was not, there was not internet marketing it was not a business thing. So really what we learned in college. It was it all theory, honey. It was very UNCA. theory. Yes, it, it was a very so, theory college. There was not a lot of practical information there. And so now it doesn't really mean anything. Like what we learned back then, it's all different now. That leads me into, um, it was an obstacle really, because it leads me into the mountain boarding. So mm -hmm. we had snowboarded, you know about that from the dating. Well, Around here, snowboarding stinks, and I and when I get into something, I want to really get into it. And you have to drive two hours to a decent mountain, and then it's ice, and this is expensive. Well, I saw in a snowboarding a a magazine an ad for mountain boarding. It's like a snowboard, but it has wheels, and you don't need the snow. You can mm -hmm. go on grass. Well, I was like, all right. I can remember studying that catalog for a year before I finally bit the bullet and bought one. And loved it. And just like anything else I loved, like St. Bernard's, I didn't really love mowing grass, but St. Bernard's, I've turned it to a business. Mountain birding, I turned it into a business. And now farming, I turned it into a business. But uh, the mountain boarding became a business. You know, the internet was coming around. Mm -hmm. I said, what if I sell mountain boards? What if I <laughs> contact these manufacturers and say, hey, if I sell a mountain board, can I like get pay you and buy it from you and you ship it directly to the customer? I don't think there was a name for it then, but it's now called drop shipping. And mm -hmm. they agreed. And I can remember the very first day I opened, I sold a board to the United Kingdom and three miles away to a guy that was living up here. 
And the first day I'm on to something. And we did really well with yeah. that. And even at the height when Dis Di uh, we, we got to where if somebody searched on Google for mountain boarding, we came up on top. Mm -hmm. It's called so search engine optimization. So it used to be uh, his his mountain board business was yeah. called mountainboardshop.com. Yeah. And it actually did really well and we I I helped run it and um, We were running it in college, guys. Yeah. At college. Uh, there was a class that was helpful. It was a small business, so I did one on my mountain boarding. He did. I, internship. I was my own intern. You interned for me, and there was another young lady that interned for me. So I had like three workers at yeah. my, in my business then. We, we had two. But had it was a beautiful interns. business. Like it I really could run was. it while I was in college. Yeah. It like was really, a... all I had to do is some point during the day answer emails, take in orders, send them out, and the and manufacturers would ship them. So you also do you remember this? You had um, so your dad had because you lived at your dad's house, and he mm -hmm. ran the business out of his out of that house and so um there there was the landline for your home and then your dad had a fax line and then you had yeah a business line coming in yeah. and aol y'all and it would ring tw two times and so then you got a cell phone yeah this was like when you know cell phones were just coming out yeah. and he got a cell phone and he would forward his business line to a cell phone yep so that when we would be out I'd he be could make phone calls lunch. yeah he could mountainboardshop.com <laughs> And I remember one time saying somebody wanted to speak to the speak to uh, somebody about what did you use to handle? I don't know something you handled. And I said, hold on, I'll send you that department. And they said, you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas was always good. Yeah. We had Disney came out with a movie called Johnny Coppola back on board, and it starred mountain boarders. And our business skyrocketed like yeah. almost a hundred thousand really dollars one year. And this is like fresh out of college, and so. Yeah, I maybe kind of wish I could have focused more on the business during that. But college kept us focused, I think, because you had so little time. Mm. I think we were more focused with our time, yeah. especially at that age. So that's it. We should wrap that up because we're at like 27 minutes okay. on this one video. So uh, we'll wrap that up, guys. Next video, we're going to talk about being married to how we ended up in Honduras and how yes. that was a significant part of our life and a significant part of where we are today.